Hey everybody, it's Jim and welcome back to another lesson of Introduction to Corn Shell. Today, I want to go over how we can access a file and look at what is inside of the file via a read statement. So here's our program for today, read3.ksh. We are reading input from a file and right here is the format, the magic, on how we do it. So let's take a closer look at this while statement. Remember, the while statement has a format of while, a test condition, do, some statements, until the done line. So while this test condition is true, do all the statements between the do to the done. And in this case, our test condition is read var. And as you may remember, read reads input normally from the keyboard and stores the results in this variable that you've put after the word read. However, if you notice, after the word done, we have a redirection arrow and a file. And what this says is that instead of using the keyboard as input, use the contents of this file as input. And the way this works is this redirection right here will look at what is inside a file. It will take the first line of file and put it right here inside of this variable var, the whole first line. The read statement said, well, I have something read, so therefore I'm OK. So I'm going to return a value of true. So our while statement becomes true, and we execute all these statements between the do to the done portion. Next, we take and look at the second line in this file. We plop the contents of the second line in file into the variable var. This read statement says, I was able to read something. So I'm going to be happy. I'm going to return a value of true. Therefore, our while testkin is true. So we execute everything between do to done. Then we look at the third line. And we take the third line, put it inside of the variable var. Read is true. Therefore, our test condition is true, yada, 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 until we run out of lines within our file. When we run out of lines within our file, read can't read anything, so it's unhappy. It returns a value of false, and our while statement is false, so therefore we're done with the do to done portion in all of our while loop. Now, the format, once again, is read excuse me, while, read a variable, do some statements, done, input arrow, file. Now, I know this format looks a little odd. It is odd to me, but it works and it is the correct format. So in a minute, we will do an actual example here. We have an input file called IP file, and all we're doing is we're going to read in the contents one line at a time into a variable called var, and then we are going to take and print the results out, excuse me, print out whatever was put into var, but we're going to proceed it with a backslash T, which stands for tab, because as you may remember, 
the backslash means add to or remove from the meaning of the next character. And in this case, the next character is a T, which normally would be a letter T, but we're going to add meaning to it, which means make it a tab. So a couple things I want to point out is this right here is not the correct format. You cannot have the input arrow and the file name right up here in the right up here with the read statement. To me, this format would make more sense. It doesn't work. It creates an infinite loop, which is not what you want. You want to be able to read the contents of the file one line at a time. In order to do that, you do have to put the redirection down here at the bottom after the word done. Also, and this one really annoys me, is you cannot put parentheses around the read and variable name. I like to put parentheses when I can because to me it shows grouping which makes things look better and it makes it easier to read code. However, Cornshell doesn't like having the parentheses around the read statement. It just doesn't like it. So once again, the correct format is to have a while statement and our test condition is read variable name and then you have the word do and the do can be on a separate line by itself. I just put it up there because I wanted to. You have your statements to run and then you have your done portion. And afterward you have an input arrow and your input file. So let's run our program here and just so you know let's take a look at the input file and the input file as you can see everything was right up against the left column and the results were in fact tabbed in and these lines right here were just plain blank empty lines and the corn shell program knew how to take care of them. So it's perfectly okay to have blank lines in your input file.